Okay, so now in this portion, I do want to talk just a little bit about Fusarium. Now, I will have to admit this is totally brand new to me, so there's a lot that I don't know about and I'm still in the process of researching. But I do want to let you guys know there are so many amazing videos out there from other orchid growers that have also experienced this and have shared their experiences. One of which I love is from Bumblebee. That is how I found out about Fusarium. Of course, there's also Miss Orchid Girl that has a very informative video on Fusarium as well and also sharing her experience of the bout that she's going through and of course there's also Zane's video also very informative as well so definitely do your research and there's already videos out there I'll go ahead and link this in my description as well so you guys can research that information don't ever take my word or anyone else's word for it do your own research guys that is how you're gonna fully understand and really get to know exactly what you want to learn about now, I had a request from a good friend and also a viewer by the name of Diane Thompson, and she indeed requested some more information. She had said that she's seen a lot of videos out there talking about Fusarium, but they did not touch on a very important topic that she wanted to definitely share out there with the public, and I also felt it was very important that I do just that because this was totally brand new to me too, and I have to admit, it did cause quite a scare with me. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Fusarium. How long has it been around? Well, I can tell you that the first instance, or when it was discovered, was actually back in 1874. So indeed, it's been around for quite a while now. It's just now it's coming closer into the orchid community, or we have begin to experience it. So now it's a topic that's very hot. And you know what? It should be a very hot topic, because if you're in during any case of Fusarium, you know that it can be quite a scary disease because it can be quite lethal to your orchids if you cannot get a hold and a grasp on it, and it is also highly contagious. Now, this disease is actually more popular in your crops and your vegetation. Your farmers are well experienced with Fusarium, and I have to tell you, Fusarium is one of their number one top enemies. It's been known to destroy crops such as your tomatoes and your potatoes and bananas and I'm talking about entire crops so yeah monetary wise it's a destruction and a nightmare to a lot of farmers out there also your botanist and your people that are really into plants your horticulturist people that study plants also know about this fusarium because they are well versed at plants and structure and how it works and of course the many any diseases that can invade these plants. Also, your well-experienced professionals in the orchid community are also well aware of Fusarium also. And of course, if you guys want to know more, do your research online. But there's so many books out there, guys. There's so many books out there that also focus on a lot of the diseases, including Fusarium. And this is one in particular. This is called Florida Vanda Growing Month to Month. I have to tell you, this is like a Bible to Vanda growers and Fusarium can run quite rampant in your Vandas as well so this is definitely covered and this is written by Martin Motes and you guys know he is very well versed in Vandas and other orchids and also has 50 years of experience and definitely in this book right here it talks about Fusarium and also many other diseases so again do your research okay so Diane Thompson had asked me to share the information that not only can Fusarium affect plants and crops and orchids, but guess what folks, Fusarium can also affect humans and also animals, believe it or not. And indeed, I want to tell you just how many ways it can affect us. The Fusarium disease can actually colonize and then create mycotoxins that can become harmful to humans and also animals. And this can actually attribute to many different types of infections, such as infections of the eyes, the nails, the bones, the joints, and also systemic infections 
such as pneumonia in those that have low immune system. If you ingest Fusarium, then you can actually become very, very ill from Fusarium as well. Now, how in the world would we ever ingest Fusarium? Well, it's really simple. If you have wheat that has been infected with Fusarium, and then later on they bake it into bread, and of course later on we consume the bread, well, guess what? We have just ingested Fusarium, of which can cause us very, very sick ailments. That's right, we can become very sick and it's also been noted to cause fatality. So yeah, it is something that we should be very mindful of and also be aware of some of the things that it can cause not only in our plants but also in us as well. And the only way we can do that is if we learn as much as we can so that we can combat it and definitely identify it. I think in a lot of cases we've lost orchids and probably misdiagnosed it. Didn't even know about Fusarium, so of course, we didn't know that that might have been what they passed away from. I know I've had several orchids that have passed away and I can't tell you. Perhaps it was even due to Fusarium. I don't know, but it's definitely something I believe that we should all be mindful of. So should we worry about Fusarium? I think we should. Should we learn more about Fusarium? I think we should. And should we thank the people that have created videos sharing their experiences with Fusarium? Of course I think we should. And I thank you guys all that you have informed us and made us aware of this Fusarium because just as long as we're aware of it, we can be mindful and identify it and of course we can find ways to combat it as well so again do your research and find out exactly how we can stay safe from this fusarium and together with all of the information that we have been sharing we can indeed get through this